Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you today? My name's Linda. I'm your certified trauma recovery coach. Well, actually, now that we're talking about it, I'm actually an advanced NPE certified trauma recovery coach. So that's really cool. Actually, also too, I should give you or do for you and what are we doing? Video on... <laughs> NPE, which is not parent expected because it's actually something that's very big in the world today. However, today we're going to have a really quick look at self sabotage. Now, you might ask, well, why are we doing that? And <laughs> it's because this past couple of weeks I've come to realize that there were aspects of my life where I've been self-sabotaging my recovery success and didn't know it. And that's part of, um, how can we explain that in a way that's really like, we don't know that we're doing self-sabotage until we actually get some of the pointers along the way. And I didn't realise that I was self-sabotaging and to, well, until recently when I realised I was holding grudges. And I didn't know I was holding grudges until I had a bit of a disagreement with one of my sons, my gorgeous younger son, as always, because he's always pushing the envelope. And he came and spoke to me afterwards and I was like, oh, my goodness, all these years when I've been ignored when there's been problems in a marriage and I'm not allowed to talk about how I feel, I'm not allowed to talk about my thoughts around, you know, what's happening, I'm not allowed to express what I'd like and all of that was getting shoved down, it really did leave me with that sense of holding a grudge and I was mortified. I was absolutely like, oh, my goodness, this is happening inside of me and I didn't realise it was happening inside of me until my gorgeous son came along and said, Mum, let's talk. And next thing you know, the whole sensation of holding a grudge came up and I went, oh, my goodness, it's so different when you have that relationship with another adult where you can talk through your challenges, your disagreements, and sit down and say, well, this is what was happening for me. And he can say, this is what's happening for him. And both of us didn't realise that during earlier that day, because we're not in each other's, you know, um, space all the time and uh, he spends a lot of time upstairs. We don't live together per se. So I don't know what's going on in his life unless he tells me and vice versa. So when we had this conversation around, oh, what's happened for you today, what's happened for you today, this is what I was feeling and I couldn't understand. This is what I'm feeling and I couldn't understand. And then we work it towards being able to go, oh, my goodness. And then we can, then I was able to say, oh, my goodness, you know, in the future I'm going to make sure that I'm paying more attention to what's happening for you as well, you know, because I didn't even think about it. And that, and you know, because, of course, then I felt really bad as well. But we don't stay stuck in the feeling bad. So self-sabotage when it comes to complex trauma is we want to succeed. So and, and it can be in different parts of our life. So think of I want to succeed as a mum. I want to succeed in my business. I want to succeed at work, uh, in a relationship, anything that you want to succeed at. And it can even be down to, like, so they are pretty big things. It can even be down to minor things like, I want to be able to succeed at, at navigating or negotiating, being able to buy a new car or swap my car or trade my car in or even you know, navigating, being able to be good at sales and marketing. But let's face it, that's not going to happen for me because I'm hopeless at it. I want to be able to good, be good at a craft or art or something that you want to do, a sport, 
even being able to go and play group sports or participate in anything. And this sense of self-sabotage can come up and we don't know about it. So we've got to be on the lookout for it. So I put together a list of things for us to be on the lookout that could be sabotaging our success as well. So the first one was holding grudges, which I've talked about, I just realised was happening for me. Um, another one is we don't ask for help. And that can definitely be a trauma response because we didn't grow up knowing we could ask for help or we did ask for help and were shut down or were just left with a complete impression that, you know, I'm here on my own, I've just got to make it happen, okay? Um, trusting people who haven't earned it, okay? I want us to really, really get our minds wrapped around changing our minds around from oh, I met you, you're a lovely person, I'm going to trust you with my whole entire life instantly. Two, oh, I've met a new person, that's great. Let's see how long they're around for and and let's take a look at the overall look of their life. You know, do they have integrity? How do they treat other people? What are they like with their commitments? And that doesn't mean, now when I say commitments, I also don't mean that because you can't keep a commitment, you're not trustworthy. The trustworthiness comes in communicating, look, I'm really not feeling up to it today. I can't do that, okay? So we, as having complex PTSD or mental health challenges, sometimes we just can't make it to things, but it is our responsibility to be able to be as honest as we can be. So for me, those closest to me, I can say, look, it's just not happening for me today and I can't make it. And then be honest with myself too, whether I'm having a trauma response of, oh, I'm better off just on my own, I'm not going, and just going anyhow, all right? So can you see that it's not just cut and dry, black and white? It becomes more complex when we have to add our own bits into it. Perfectionism, needing to be right. Oh, I've mentioned once or twice maybe before how in my younger years I never used to speak so I wouldn't get into a communication in a group of people unless I knew I was right. That's how terrified I was of speaking up. And then, of course, I didn't know it but I probably became a pain because I only spoke when I was right and then you know, that was, would have been incredibly frustrating for people as well. It's okay that we, it's actually part of our process to learn that mess is good because in mess we can get a bit more creative, we can open up in our relationships, we can go, oh, damn, I overcommitted myself. So messy is life, all right? Perfectionism comes from trauma-driven responses. So let's be gentle on ourselves. And needing to be right is another side of that. Do you need to be right and ask, is this a trauma response? Okay. People pleasing. And we all put our hands up today for people pleasing. We all wrote the book on people pleasing, how to do it, how to do it well, how to ignore ourselves. All right. That can sabotage our success because we grow into being able to say, look, I'm sorry, this is what I can do, this is who I am. And I was just talking to someone about that this morning saying, this is what I can do in this situation, this is what I see, this is what can happen, but here's what I can't do as well. All right, so if you can add on the bits of here's what I can do, here's what I can't do, and give the other person room to accept whether it will work for them or not as well, so it's a mutual connection, then you can begin to break free from the people-pleasing as well. Uh, avoiding conflict or causing conflict. We can actually come out of our childhood developmental trauma as somebody who avoids conflict, which I did a lot of at certain points in time, or we can be somebody who causes conflict, and that is actually how our brain is wired. It is a trauma response, obviously, and when people know that, it gives them the option to be able to say, oh, which one am I? And I have the most beautiful person I know who does 
or did used to cause conflict. And once they realised it, they were like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. So they began to be able to change up their trauma response as well. Procrastinating. I did a whole video on it, a couple of videos, and it is a trauma response too, by the way. It's not something you are consciously choosing to do, especially when it's tied in with childhood developmental trauma. It is not a choice. It's something we work with to heal our brain. And as our brain heals, the procrastination actually doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. And one of the things, I've talked to you about this before, the dopamine brain food, this has been brilliant to help me as well. It's cleared the brain fog. It's given me mental clarity. It's helped me be able to put things in an order and I get so much more work done. And other people who've gone on it after I've said this is what's happening for me, They've all said to, uh, this This is working for me as well. Uh, one of my clients actually said to me, oh, I don't know if this is working for me. And I know you watch the videos. <laughs> and I just realised how it's working for you. When you think about all the stress that you've been through over the past two weeks, and they will know who I'm talking about, you haven't gone into depression. And this is what I found with this. It's natural stacks. I am not a affiliate and I never will be. You can read all the reviews on there and make up your own mind. I'd prefer you to make up your own mind. The depression that I have suffered for for years and tried so many things to overcome, I do not have the depression and even though lockdown put me into a state of dissociation, I do not have the depression. And I'm going, yes. Okay. So procrastinating. That was all under procrastinating. <laughs> Swallowing our emotions. Next time somebody's being just unhealthy in front of you, disagreeable, let's say disagreeable, ask the question, am I swallowing my emotions? So am I, <laughs> am I just you know, sucking them up and not talking about them, not getting them out. Um, it's really toxic and we we have to address that. First step, go to Google, Google Emotional Wheel and start using it to name your emotions, okay? And last one, believing life is better off alone is definitely a trauma response, is definitely something we need to work through, okay? because we are here to build healthy relationships. They don't have to be in our life as in close, but having healthy relationships where, where we can have a good laugh and all of that stuff is really, really good for us, good for our heart and soul and does help our recovery incredibly. And just a very, very, very quick reminder um, for everyone who wants to say hello, Panda, <laughs> Panda decided to join in this morning. But just a quick reminder that I am teaching a new certification next year for the Complex Trauma Certification and you can sign up via the link down below or in the bio, whichever platform you're on, to get the emails for when it's released as well. I look forward to working with you. Thank you for joining in and thank you for everyone who's messaged me like, lately saying how much they enjoy the information and so on. And if there's ever anything I can do to help you, Whatever platform you're on, just reach out because if I don't have the answer, I will definitely be able to either find some information for you because that seems to be something I'm good at or I can refer you to someone if I know them as well because I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I don't have what everybody needs to recover. But what I do have is access to many different professionals globally that may be able to help you or also point you in the right direction as well. Everybody I know that works in this area has a heart of gold and just wishes that for everybody to be able to live their best life as well. All right, blessings and dreams, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.